It's time now for Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at this same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Engaged Girl Murder Case. When you are suffering from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pain, you want fast relief. Well, just try Anison. Anison gives incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. Many people first discovered Anison tablets through their own physician or dentist. Next time you want effective relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, get Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Anison, A N A C I N comes in boxes of 12 and 30 tablets or in economical bottles of 50 and 100. Now for Mr. Keene and the engaged girl murder case. Our scene opens on a wealthy, fashionable estate in Connecticut. A number of people are riding across the estate on horseback, but two of them have fallen behind not realizing that they are both about to become participants in a tragedy. Better hurry, Audrey. The others are getting ahead of us. Herbert, wait. Let's walk the horses a bit. I I want to talk to you, and this is the first chance I've had to see you alone all day. What's the matter, darling? You look concerned about something. I am concerned about your sister, Martha. Martha? Herbert, I, I don't think she wants you to marry me. But that's sheer nonsense. Martha's very fond of you. She pretends to be in front of you. But I believe she hates me. Now, Audrey, don't you think you're being oversensitive? Herbert, I know how much you love your sister, and I didn't imagine you'd believe me, but it's true, and I just can't... What's that? That sounds like one of our dogs. Yes, it is. It's Sultan, my sister's dog. There he is, Audrey, near that clearing. Come on, let's ride over there. What's the matter, boy? Herbert, look! It's my sister, Martha, lying in the thicket. Hold my horse while I dismount, Audrey. What's happened, Herbert? Has she been hurt? Audrey, she's been struck on the head. Martha's dead. The police said, Mr. Keene, that someone must have struck my sister Martha on top of the head with a heavy club and killed her instantly. This occurred while you and your guests were out riding, Mr. Langley? Yes. Uh, Was your sister Martha part of the group who were on horseback? Yes, I I thought she'd gone on ahead with the others. Well, hitting a horseback rider on the head with a club when you stand on the ground, well, that ain't an easy trick. Somebody on a horse must have followed the girl and struck her from the saddle. My partner, Mike Clancy, has a good point there, Mr. Langley. Tell me, were all your guests questioned by the local police? Yes, Mr. Keene, but none of them was held. They were all Martha's close friends and mine. It's unthinkable that any of them would have wanted to harm her in any way. In other words, you can't put the finger of suspicion on any of them. No, Mr. Keene. My sister Martha was a beautiful, intelligent woman. Very popular with men, though she never married. I loved her as much as I've ever loved anyone in this world. With the exception of Audrey, perhaps. Miss Langley, tell me a little more about your fiancée, Audrey Stafford. She's a wonderful girl. We met last summer on a cruise to Bermuda. She was on vacation at the time. She, She worked for a banking firm. But she resigned her position at my request shortly after we announced our engagement. I see. I'm wealthy. My late father left his entire estate to my sister Martha and to me. 
I didn't think it was necessary for my future wife to retain her job. Well, what about that incident you mentioned when you told us the story before, Mr. Langley? What incident, Mr. Clancy? I imagine Mike is referring to your talk with your fiance Audrey, just before you found your sister's body, the talk concerning her unfriendly attitude toward Audrey. Oh, oh, that... It was nothing. I shouldn't even have brought it up. Mr. Langley, I presume you came here to ask me to solve the mystery of your sister's murder. Yes, Mr. Keene. I came to plead with you to enter the case, for Martha's sake. And also for Audrey's? What do you mean? From what you told me, Mr. Langley, I imagine there is one suspect in this murder case. You mean my fiancé? Yes. You said that Audrey told you that Martha was against your marriage. But Audrey would never have murdered my sister for that, or for any reason. That still remains a question to be answered. However, uh, I can't accept the case, Mr. Langley, unless you tell me everything openly and truthfully. I should have known better than to try to hide my real feelings from you, sir. Yes, I want Audrey protected. So far, no one knows that she quarreled with Martha before the murder. Over you? Yes, Mr. Keene. I overheard the argument. I said nothing to Audrey, thinking it would pass over after the wedding. Why did your sister want to stop the marriage, Mr. Langley? For a very silly reason. Martha thought Audrey wanted to marry me for my money. I never believed that, Mr. Keene, and I never will. At the same time, if I accept the case... You must be prepared to have me include your fiancé as a possible suspect. I understand that, Mr. Keene. And I'm willing to meet those terms. All right. Now, how far is your estate from here? It's just over the line in Connecticut. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Keene's office. Mike Clancy speaking. Is Mr. Herbert Langley there, please? This is Mrs. Wrightson, his housekeeper. Uh, just a minute. Uh, your housekeeper, Mr. Langley. Oh, well, yes, I told her where I'd be in case there were any messages... It must be important. Well, here you are. Thank you, Mr. Clancy. Hello. Mr. Langley, this is Mrs. Wrightson. Yes? Mr. Ernest Porter's here to see you. He says it's very urgent, and he wants to know when you'll be home. Is he near the phone, Mrs. Wrightson? No, he stepped out in the garden. Well, tell him I expect to be home within an hour. Mr. Porter didn't say what his business was, did he? No, sir, but he acted like it was a matter of life and death. All right, Mrs. Wrightson, I'm on my way. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Langley. It's a neighbor of mine named Porter, Mr. Keene. He seems to have something terribly important to tell me. Who is he, Mr. Langley? He has an estate near mine. He and his nephew, Alan, come over quite often. I can't imagine what he's got in his mind... unless it refers to my sister Martha's murder. It probably does. The sooner we find out just what it is, the better. Mike Clancy and I will go with you to your home right now. <laughs> For just a moment, Mr. Keene, I have a key to the front door. Well, Mike, while I'm inside the house, suppose you take a look around, you know, the usual checkup. Right, sir. Come in, Mr. Keene. Oh, Mr. Langley, I, I didn't hear you come in. This is Mr. Keene, Mrs. Wrightson. Mrs. Wrightson, my housekeeper. I've heard of Mr. Keene, the great investigator. I'm very glad to know you, sir. How do you do, Mrs. Wrightson? Where's Mr. Porter? In the study. Oh, Mr. Keene and his partner, Mr. Clancy, will be staying overnight. Would you have one of the maids prepare a room? Of course, Mr. Langley. Oh, um, Miss Audrey called. She said she's coming out to see you at five o'clock. Well, it's almost that now. Show her in when she arrives, please. Yes, sir. This way, Mr. Keene. Well, this is quite a handsome house you have here, Mr. Langley. It's been in the family for generations. Oh, here's Mr. Porter. Herbert, I want to speak to you alone. This is Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, Ernest. Mr. Keene? You mean he's taken over the investigation of your sister's murder? Yes. Well, then I suppose I ought to say what I have to say in front of him. I think you should, Mr. Porter, if it concerns the murder of Martha Langley. It does, Mr. Keene. Then what is it you want to tell us? Well, I have a nephew, Alan, of whom I'm very fond. He's been living with me since his parents died. And I'd stand behind him under any circumstances. What are you trying to say, Mr. Porter? Mr. Keene, you can accuse me for that matter or anyone else who was along on that morning ride. My nephew's innocent and completely honest. What are you driving at, Ernest? I think I know what Mr. Porter's trying to say, Mr. Langley. Apparently his nephew, Alan, is connected with your sister's murder in some way. And Mr. Porter is attempting to clear him, even before he's been accused. Well, Mr. Keene, knowing you for what you are, a fair man, I, I don't mind putting my cards on the table. 
My nephew, Alan, came to me today and confessed that he was the first one to find Martha's body. You mean he found her there near the woods before I did? Apparently, Herbert. How did he happen to find Martha's body, Mr. Porter? Well, he dropped behind the rest of us as we were riding through the woods. The reason he said nothing about it up to now was that he didn't want to become involved, Mr. Keene. That's not a very good excuse. The boy was excited, frightened, perhaps. At any rate, he admitted the truth, didn't he? Yes, and it's in his favor. Mr. Porter, is there anything else you wanted to say to Mr. Langley? No. Except that he has my deepest sympathy. I appreciate that, Ernest, and thanks. In recent months, you and my sister Martha have become fast friends, and I... I know you miss her, as we all do. In recent months, did you say? Well, Mr. Keene, Martha Langley and I were better than friends. I dared to hope that she would marry me. I didn't know that, Ernest. I said nothing, Herbert, because she turned me down. It was too bad. Both our families are rich and would have been a most advantageous marriage, as well as a happy one for me. I'm glad you brought that out by yourself, Mr. Porter. You mean if I'd hidden it, I too would have become a suspect? Well, Mr. Keene, as far as I could... That sounded like a gun. It was. It came from the back of your house. Both you gentlemen remain where you are. I'm going out to investigate. All right, young fella. Just stay where you are. Well, what's happened, Mike? Well, Mr. Keene, I heard this fella prowling around in the shrubbery. And when I yelled, he started to run. I fired two shots in the air to scare him. He stopped in a hurry. Well, who are you? Alan Porter is my name. I thought I was being attacked by a maniac. That's why I tried to run. You are Ernest Porter's nephew? Yes. Mr. Keene, there's a car coming up the road. Take young Porter back to the house, Mike. I'll join you in just a minute. Okay, me bucko. Let's go. Good evening. Who are you? My name is Keene. Oh, the famous investigator. I'm Audrey Stafford. I'm glad you come, Audrey. I wanted to ask you a few questions in regard to the murder of Martha Langley. Leave her alone. I beg your pardon. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Wrightson. Please, Mrs. Wrightson, I can handle this alone. Audrey hasn't done anything, Mr. Keene. You have no right to question her. Well, aren't you taking a few liberties, considering that Mr. Langley asked me to investigate this case, and you're one of his employees? Oh, it's not meant as disrespect, Mr. Keene, but... Oh, I've come to look on Miss Audrey as my future mistress, and I want to protect her. What makes you feel that she needs protection? You suspect her of being one of Miss Martha's enemies, don't you? I haven't mentioned that to anyone. Neither has Mr. Langley, I'm sure. Oh, then, then I made a mistake. I beg your pardon, Mr. Keene. However, you're not far from wrong. What? I do suspect Miss Audrey. Mr. Keene, you don't... You can't that. suspect Miss Audrey. She admitted to Herbert Langley that his sister Martha was against their marriage. And that alone could be construed as motive enough for murder. Don't say it, Mr. Keene. Don't say that word. Mother, or... please, Mother, don't... Audrey, did you say mother? She lied. I'm not her mother. That I... won't help, Mrs. Wrightson. It ties in with your strange desire to protect someone who should be almost a stranger to you. So, Audrey is your daughter. No one knew up to now. There are many more things that are still concealed in this murder case, Mrs. Wrightson, but I intend to bring them all to the surface and at the same time bring Martha Langley's killer to justice. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the engaged girl murder case. Meanwhile, beware of unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Those cracks and crevices where food particles can decay must be reached to have a really clean mouth, a welcome breath. Your dentist knows this to be true. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos gives amazing dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to penetrate hard-to-reach dental areas. Helps dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath and tooth decay. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos has high polishing action, too. Brightens dingy teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Kalanos is gentle, safe even for children's teeth and tender gums. Enjoy its cool, clean, minty flavor. Kalanos is dentist-recommended. 
Cleans your teeth bright, keeps your breath right. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Get Kalanos with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the engaged girl murder case. The murder of wealthy Martha Langley brings Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner Mike Clancy to the fabulous Langley estate in Connecticut, where Mr. Keene begins a difficult investigation. He has just discovered that Mrs. Wrightson, the Langley housekeeper, is actually the mother of Audrey Stafford, who is about to marry the victim's brother, Herbert. After learning of this startling revelation on the driveway in front of Herbert Langley's palatial home, Mr. Keene continues to question Mrs. Wrightson and Audrey in the hope of obtaining further information. Mrs. Wrightson, I advise you to be truthful with me if you really want to protect your daughter, Audrey. As long as you know my secret, Mr. Keene, I'll tell you everything. But not in front of Audrey. You shouldn't have made me keep that secret, Mother. I wanted Herbert to know about it. Please, dear. Let me speak to Mr. Keene alone for a few minutes. Very well, Mother. Audrey, you'll find your fiancé, Herbert Langley, in the house, along with his neighbors, Mr. Porter and his nephew, Alan. I'll talk to you later, Mother. Yes, darling. Mr. Keene, there's one thing you must understand. My daughter, Audrey, is no snob. She pleaded desperately with me to allow her to tell Mr. Langley I was her mother. And why didn't you? I thought it would hurt her marriage, at least socially, since I'm Mr. Langley's housekeeper. I was so happy knowing she'd get those things in life I always dreamed she'd have. Wealth, social position, and happiness. Go on, Mrs. Wrightson. It was easy to keep the secret as far as our names were concerned. I married twice. Audrey's name is Stafford, but I kept the name of my second husband, John Wrightson. I did it thinking that one day I might not want Audrey to admit that her mother was poor and ordinary. I wouldn't call your love for your daughter ordinary, Mrs. Wrightson. Her meeting with Herbert Langley was just a coincidence. I came here to work as his housekeeper after Audrey left on her cruise to Bermuda, and she didn't know about my new job until she got back. Then I cautioned her to say nothing about it to Mr. Langley. I see. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me, Mrs. Wrightson? Only that Herbert Langley wasn't the only millionaire who wanted to marry Audrey. Who else was there? Alan Porter. He was mad about her. And he's very rich, Mr. Keene, a well-known polo player. He wanted to marry Audrey, too. But she loves Herbert. And Martha Langley, Alan Porter, and his uncle all together couldn't change that love. How do you mean, Mrs. Wrightson? Did they try to stop the marriage? Mr. Keene, two hours before Martha Langley's body was found, I happened to pass by the Chinese tea house. The Chinese tea house? It's a small cottage on the estate over there in the woods. Inside the tea house, Martha Langley, Mr. Porter, and Alan were having a conversation. What were they saying, Mrs. Wrightson? Mr. Porter was saying that Audrey and his nephew, Alan, would make a good match. Martha Langley seemed to be irritated. She asked young Alan why he hadn't been able to win Audrey away from her brother. And what was Alan's answer? He didn't have time to answer, Mr. Keene. At that moment, my daughter Audrey walked into the tea house, so they changed the conversation. It's very interesting, Mrs. Wrightson. It puts a new aspect on the case. What do you mean, Mr. Key? I'll explain later. Meanwhile, would you please ask my partner, Mike Clancy, to meet me inside the Chinese tea house immediately and tell him it's very important. Mike! Is that you, Mr. Key? I'm over here on the tea house porch. Sure, this is certainly a fancy shack, isn't it, boss? Well, it looks like something from a Chinese palace. Mike, uh, come inside for a moment. I want to show you something. Oh, look at this. Saints preserve us. Why, someone must have tried to tear the house down, Mr. Keene. There's a hole right through the wall. The walls are flimsy, Mike. But they've been reinforced with short, narrow beams. That's the one part of this tea house that isn't authentically Chinese. One of those wooden beams, small but solid, has been pulled out right here. Mr. Keene, that missing piece of wood could have been the murder weapon. Exactly. And here's something else, Mike. Why, it's a bit of cloth. I found it hanging on this nail head, here where the beam was torn out. Now, 
If you wanted to tear a beam out of this wall with the aid of a chisel, say, how would you brace yourself? Well, I'd stick my knee up against the wall on this side for leverage. That's just what the killer did, Mike. But he unknowingly left this bit of cloth on the head of that nail. This bit of cloth comes from heavy riding breeches. So the killer probably never even scratched himself or herself. Herself? Well, nowadays women wear heavy riding breeches too, Mike. Yeah, but Mr. Keene, that still leaves us with the job of picking out the killer. Several people were riding that day when Martha Langley was murdered. I know that. However, I think I have an idea. Tomorrow morning, Mike, we'll all go riding here on the Langley estate and turn my murder theory into a fact. <laughs> Mr. Keene, would you like to ride with Audrey and me? We're going through the woods. No, you better ride on ahead of us, Mr. Langley. My partner, Mike Clancy, and I will join you in a few minutes. All right, Mr. Keene. Come on, Audrey. Well, our horses ain't exactly in my line, boss, but I, <laughs> I try to keep up with you. You ride very well, Mike. Well, not half as good as you do. Hold up there, you old burner. Take it easy. And sure, they were on pretty curious about why you wanted to take that ride this morning. My uh, reason paid dividends, Mike. It, it did, boss? Yeah, I know who murdered Martha Langley. All I need now is proof of how it was done. That's what... Here comes Alan Porter. Mr. Keene. Yes, Alan? I, I don't know why you suggested this ride, but uh, I feel I owe you an explanation. Of what? Last night, when Mr. Clancy fired at me, I wasn't prowling. I only... Well, it was a natural mistake in all our parts, Alan. But you seem to take it more seriously than it warrants. Well, I just wanted you to know that I'm being honest. And I have nothing to hide. I'll see you later, Mr. Keene. Sure, and he sounded like a young man with a guilty conscience, boss. You might have a very good reason for that, Mike. I found out last night, after seeing a picture of the murder girl, Martha Langley... That she and Audrey were the same height and often wore identical riding habits. Well, what does that mean, sir? Alan realizes that I may know that Audrey refused his proposal of marriage and so may have wanted to take revenge. You mean that he may have killed the wrong girl because they, they looked alike in their riding clothes? Yes, it's possible. Mike, uh, do you see that thicket over there under the apple tree? That's where Martha Langley's body was found. Mm. Seeing it gave me an idea. Here, let's get near the tree. Oh. All right, Mike. Right here. Uh, would you mind dismounting? It'll be a pleasure to get off this nag, boss. Oh, oh there. Oh! Mike, the critter ran away. Now, we'll round him up later. Mike, the lowest branch of this tree is just a little above the head of a rider on horseback. Climb up there now. I'll explain what I'm getting at. Well, I do my best, boss. From riding horses to tree climbing, it's preserves the investigating business is sure getting to be strenuous. That's good work, Mike. Now, unless I look up and peer very carefully through the branches, I wouldn't see you. Well, then, Mr. Keene, the killer could swing from here in the tree and... As his victim came by on horseback, hit her on the head. Yes, Mike. I'm convinced that's the way it was done. Yeah, but who was the murderer, boss? He seems to be joining us right now. Be quiet, Mike. Stay up there in the tree, out of sight. Tired of riding with the others, Mr. Porter? What are you doing here, Mr. King? Solving a murder. That's why you decided to see what I was up to. What do you mean? The man I intend to arrest for Martha Langley's murder is you, Porter. You think you can prove that I killed Martha? Very easily. I have a tiny piece of cloth torn from your riding breeches. When you pulled your murder weapon, a wooden beam out of the tea house wall. And there's the hole in your breeches. I saw it just before we left the house. Don't spur your horse, Keener. I'll shoot you out of the saddle. That gun won't help, Porter. The others are riding half a mile away by now, and you seem to have lost your partner, too. I think this gun may help a great deal. Why did you kill Martha Langley? I don't mind telling you. You'll never get a chance to pass it on to anyone else. 
I killed Martha to protect myself, Keen. Protect yourself? How? Five years ago, my brother left two million dollars to his son, Alan, and made me his guardian until he came of age. Alan comes of age tomorrow. He's 21. Did you steal his inheritance? No, I spent it. I knew how to enjoy it. And not only spent most of that money, but I left it in some of the most fashionable gambling houses in the world. And how did you think you'd get away with it when your nephew, Alan, became of age? It would have been simple if it wasn't for Martha Langley. I was going to tell Alan his parents lost the money in those gambling houses. And that I kept it from him all these years just to save their reputation. But Martha Langley found out the truth? Yes. She made a deal, though. Said if I could get my nephew, Alan, to marry Audrey, she'd keep my secret. And I had $50,000 in the bargain. But you didn't succeed. No, that fool nephew of mine was crazy about Audrey. But she fell for Herbert Langley. I think I know the rest, Porter. Do you? Martha Langley became angry when you couldn't fulfill your part of the bargain. It was her only hope of separating her brother from Audrey. You thought she'd give you away, and you killed her to prevent that. The way I'm killing you, Keen, right now. Look out, boy! Good work, Mike. Wait a minute, I'll dismount. He's out cold, Mr. Keene. When I hopped on his head from that branch, I fell right on top of him. and He hit the ground first. Yes, Mike. Porter met justice on the same spot he committed his crime. He lured Martha Langley over here when she became separated from the others. Probably by calling her as he crouched in the tree. And then he struck from above. Now he'll pay for his treachery in a court of law. <laughs> So Mr. Keene finds the solution to the engaged girl murder case. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel, Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Anne Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Cleek. Then at Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the concrete cellar murder case. Ever suffer heartburn from acid indigestion? New Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling. Anywhere, anytime. Bicidol mints give longer-lasting relief than baking soda. Help prevent immediate return of the trouble. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep when indigestion strikes at night. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief. And always have Bicidol powder in your home. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.